Well, uh, I think the beauty of uh, INVI is, is that uh, it brought together all the experts in the field. Yes. We sat in the same room. Uh, I think a lot of uh, the experts got to learn from each other how they look at this data and analyze the results, which they didn't do before. But in the end, uh, the results that they got for the ice sheets, uh, there's no surprise, right? It's not a 90 degree turn compared to what we knew already. Uh, it's confirming what we know. The ice sheets are melting. Greenland is melting more every year, and there's also an accelerating trend in Antarctica. So it's, it's fairly well documented because you have multiple instruments looking at that, and they, they sort of all agree with their error margins. But uh, I think we understand these error margins pretty well now. Jason Bach showed me some of the most recent grace uh, curves yeah. from Greenland, which appear to well, be accelerating. A, there's a big melt in 2012. Right. Very warm year, very high melt. Uh, Isabella was showing this morning uh, uh, 700 gigaton loss of mass between January 2012 and, and uh, about September. So it's about twice what you expect on a normal year from melting of the ice sheet in the summer. So it's a big drop, but it's just one year, right? You right. have to look at uh, the longer time trends, or if, if you plot that with the other years, yeah, took a big dip in 2012, but yes. we don't know what's going to happen in 2013. Right. What about Antarctica? Can we say anything about that? Antarctica, um, uh, I think there's a little bit of confusion, uh, even maybe in the mind of the communities, because Antarctica is kind of a more difficult piece to look at. Um, uh, there's no melt in Antarctica. Right? In Greenland, that's half of the signal, and melt is, is pretty well constrained. Uh, you can observe a, a melting ice sheet very easily. Uh, there's multiple ways to do that. There's no melt in Antarctica, so it's governed by changes in snowfall, which can be huge from one year to the other, and don't mean anything in the long term. Okay. Combined with what the glaciers are doing. Okay. Uh, I think we know pretty well what the glaciers are doing. Uh, uh, we don't see glaciers slowing down right. uh, along the coastline, except in a few areas. We've, we've been knowing that for since the 70s, and it's not related to climate change in any direct way. So the so the just to be clear, that we we are observing melt all over the the surface of Greenland, yeah. whereas in Antarctica we we're not observing that because those areas are so high and so cold. It's colder we're, we're, in the peninsula, even though you have melt, it doesn't produce runoff. It just refreezes in place, right? so you don't have a net mass loss from from, uh, from so melt. Not just yet, right? It's going to okay. take a little bit more time. Eventually, in Antarctica, the peninsula will start looking a little bit like Greenland, but it's going to take a little bit more time before we get there. So the mass loss in Antarctica is is through uh, the glacial glacial runoff into the sea. So glaciers flowing faster. Correct. Right, going faster. Right. So. Uh, um, discharging icebergs more frequently at sea. And that's counterbalanced with changes in snowfall. So the, the difficulty of looking at that in the Antarctic is that there are some large fluctuations in snowfall year to year, but also on multi-year timescales, decadal timescales, multiple decades. And a lot of the satellite data we're looking at uh, have short time record. ISAT was five years, right. Right? it's very short. In, uh, mm -hmm. in the history of uh, Antarctic climate. Right. You can take any segment of five-year snowfall in Antarctica and you can get a positive trend, a negative trend, sure. anything you want. Sure. It won't mean anything in the long term. Uh, ultimately, as a longer record, uh, reconstructions from reanalysis and regional climate models, they look back at 20, 30 years, so we can see some of these fluctuations. Mm -hmm. And we see there's no major trend in snowfall in Antarctica integrated as a whole. Okay. Uh, but if you look, for instance, at the GRACE data, um, in 2008-2009, there was a big snowfall event in a part of East Antarctica. That's enough to bias a little bit the results. So, um, you can look at these results two ways. You can say, well, I'll just look at this record. It looks like there's a slight increase in mass in East Antarctica. Or you can look at the big picture and say, well, look, you're only looking at 10 years of data right now. If we extend a little bit the record, because not, not in the future, back, if we extend it back, we've seen similar things before, and they don't matter in terms of the long-term trend. Okay. So we're not at the stage where we can say, Antarctica is picking up mass and it's going to continue. 
or this was just a temporary event. We, we just don't know. Okay. okay. So, depending on what your beliefs are mm -hmm. in the evolution of the system, you might argue, well, this is the beginning of something, or this is not. Okay. As a scientist, I'd rather say we don't have any idea that this is a change in trend. It's no fault. There's no particular reason why this should be happening anyway. Okay. Antarctica is not warming up as fast as the rest of the globe. Right. Uh, we haven't observed major change in snowfall. There's a little bit of that in the Antarctic Peninsula, which has been warming up for quite a long time. Yes. But even there, uh, I think it's particularly <coughs> revealing that in the Antarctic Peninsula, where we do observe uh, regional increases in snowfall, it's not sufficient to counteract the wastage from the glaciers around the sides. Okay. Uh, so you have to keep that in perspective as is well. Is that true for the continent as a whole? For Eastern Daigab, it's different because it's so big. Yeah. A small change in snowfall over such a big area oh, right. would have a big impact. Right. But it's also a desert. I mean, it's a place where it actually snows very little. Yeah. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So a 10% increase in snowfall in Antarctica, uh, uh, that's very difficult to detect. That may not mean uh, anything. You know, it happens all the time. In fact, if you look at East Antarctica, the fluctuations from year to year are much bigger than the kind of signal we're looking at. Right? If we want to see if the ice sheet is losing mass over time, what's happening from year to year is much bigger than that. Right. right. Tremendous fluctuations. Okay. But we know that. Right? Right. But sometimes you have uh, new teams that come with new instruments, they come in the game and they don't know all this background information. And sure. They, they kind of rush to conclusions. So, so just to recap, this, this study that we just saw came yeah. out, the one that you mentioned, they're basically reaffirming that uh, both the ice sheets are, yeah. are losing mass. Yeah. yeah. So and the mass loss is also increasing with time. It is increasing with time. The only little question mark is, is Antarctica has been going through a little bump lately? Yes. Is that going to continue or not? Uh, I don't think there's any indication it would continue because we've seen bumps like that before. Right. right in the record. I see. Okay. Uh, but maybe it will continue. I don't know. We'll only know if we keep observing it. 